But Colin, you, 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 that instruction that um, Newcastle stay in the box, score goals, that wasn't enough at United, was it? No, far, far from it. Uh, when, when I came and Kiddo pulled me one day and just talking in the corridor, I remember Kiddo saying, if you think scoring 40 goals at this football club is good enough, you've got no chance. <laughs> I looked at Kiddo and used to say, what are you talking about, by the way? I mean, I'm here to score goals. I got it. I got it. Um, Understanding. Welcome to the Big D Speaks. Um, today we're going to be looking at a clip from the overlap. Um, it's from a little while back, I think it was earlier on in the summer, and it's from Andy Cole's appearance on Gary Neville's The Overlap. And in this particular clip, he's going to be talking about when he first signed for Manchester United and the challenges that he faced playing up front with um, Eric Cantona, for instance, and how he had to change his style of play. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll let Andy Cole um, explain everything and you know the rest of the guys, Kino, Gary Nev and, and whatnot, they'll uh, throw their tempobs um, worth in. And at the end of this clip, if you're interested in what I've got to say, please stick around because I will be giving my thoughts on Andy Cole. Instruction that um, Newcastle stay in the box, score goals, that wasn't enough at United, was it? No, far, far from it. Uh, when, when I came and Kiddo pulled me one day and just talking in the corridor, I remember Kiddo saying, if you think scoring 40 goals at this football club is good enough, you've got no chance. <laughs> I looked at Kiddo and just say, what are you talking about, by the way? I mean, I'm here to score goals. I got it. I got it. Um, understanding what was that, in the that, training, though, Cody? Was the training... In general... At being at Manchester United, you're not just in a team that score goals. You know I mean, yeah. you've got to work hard. You've yeah, got to get involved yeah. in everything, you know. And that Newcastle had the luxury, with, but I didn't have to do it. Mm. So that's when I'm starting to say, well, things have got to change here. It's going to take a little bit of time. But I think ultimately, I learned of great players. And if you learn of great players, you know, you, things become a little bit easier. Mm. Well, that was the hardest thing for me to do. That was because um, I, I played a lot of number 10. And then when um, I went as a number nine, I remember Fergie saying to me, mm. Just stay in the box, stay away. And I, I really struggled with it, mm-hmm. to have that patience to yes. just stay up front. I was like itching to come back and get on the ball. I was like, really? I, I need to play. But then obviously I'd done it and that was my best cold scoring year. Yeah. But I actually didn't enjoy the that, game. Yeah. yeah, just give context to that. Because when you first came, you were playing in a pair. But you're talking about like the sort of 2011 season, was it? Nine, ten. Nine to eleven when Cristiano left and he just said to him, stay up front, stay yeah. within the actual width yeah. of the and box. I, hate, I hated it. I didn't enjoy the game. I'd come off... The, I had scored two goals and I come off the pitch and I was like, "We loved it, Wayne. It's hard, isn't it? Discipline yes. to Don't do feel like you've been involved yeah. in it. So, is yeah. it all about the goals and for strikers, or no. do you go it's off the, the overall no, the team, no. performance? Do you know what I mean? Like, how yeah, much no. you got on the ball? Create go off. And... I'd, I'd go off how yeah. you play, and yeah. even if you didn't score, if I played well, I'd be happy. Yeah. It's funny because as a striker, me as well, one of the things that I always wanted to make sure I worked on was the link up playing the first touch. And even if I scored in the game, if there's times I can look back where the touch is bad. Or oh, the link ups, you, you, feel, you do feel that yeah. because you want it to be perfect. The goals are not just the thing that makes you say, Yes, man, I'm, I don't need to worry. It's the play that helps the team to progress, that breaks down off of you. Yeah, of course. Which yeah. is what which I used to worry about more than yeah. anything mm-hmm. else. But that's why you are the best of the best because there'd right. be some strikers who probably would score a goal and think, You know what, I did all right Don't today. Like it's, you always yeah, want yeah, to. It's strange you say that, but ultimately, as well, you need to score goals. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a contradiction they're going, I'd be a team player. I was talking at the end of the season going, I've got 12, 15 goals. Because yeah. for the big clubs, you're going, yeah, you have to be a team player, of course, but if you're getting 10, 15 goals only, you know, they're, I think, they're looking at no, the strikers. The, the way the game's played now, if you get 10, 15 goals, everyone tells you you've had a great season. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I know what you mean, the goal, uh, that's, yeah. yeah. Probably disappointing. Well, then you talk about Lincoln play, still one of the most iconic moves, I think, is when you and Yorkie, when the, yeah. he was yeah, over yeah, at Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. Still now, if someone does that yeah, now, you're still true, like, oh, yeah. York and Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that is, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Cole, you've got, going back, you, you played with Peter Beardsley, then you went and you came to United and played with Kant now. What was the big difference? Did you uh, find that a little bit overwhelming when you first came a little bit, like in terms of the aura, the presence of Kant now? I found it a little bit, uh, you know, when you first come in. No, but if you look at them as players, they're, they're totally different players. You know, Pete was the individual who get on the ball, but he'd look to try and take people on as well. You know, Eric Wood? Uh, no, Peter. Peter Wood. His little shimmy and get on the ball, look to slip people in. You know, Eric played a totally different way to Peter. In what way? Just the way he pictured himself on the pitch, you know, the position he used to take up. You know, I, I think we looked at Peter, like, we've got to give every ball to Peter. I mean, to, sorry, to Eric, you know. I think when I played at Newcastle, it wasn't like that. 
You know what I mean? People would get on the ball when they need to get on the ball, but everyone else would play. You know, I think at Manchester United, if anything was going to go to Eric, give it to Eric. Everyone win the ball back, give it to Eric. It's mm. interesting he's saying you know? that. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah but I can't be right. Yeah but, yeah, but from an opponent looking <clears> in, <throat> one of the things that we would uh, be saying with Cantona is do not give him too much space. Don't let him have the space because probably if I'm playing for United and he's in space, you want him to have it. So our, our, our uh, match was to make sure that you'd make if he gets it, you're in his face straight away. Yeah. I would probably say give it to him all the time as well if he's got space because he can do something. I just want to um, quickly interject there just a little bit. I remember when Andy Cole first signed for Manchester United and he, when he first signed, he scored a few goals, um, but he didn't really kick on at Man United for a good 18 months. It wasn't until Eric left, actually, that uh, I felt as though Andy Cole had a really good season, and that was the 97-98 season where I think he got you know more than 20 goals for the first time um, for Manchester United. And, yeah, I, now I kind of understand why, because when he was at Newcastle, the team was centred around Andy Cole. Steel front, we'll feed you. Peter Beardsley will feed you. You will score the goals, and that's that. But as he's just said there... When he was at Man United, it was give the ball to Eric, give the ball to Eric, give the ball to Eric. And it's it, it just kind of makes sense now because that particular team didn't kick on until Eric left. Because when Eric left in 90, at the end of 97, you know, there was a little bit of a transition while they got Shenningham and York in. But once the team didn't centre around Eric, then everyone started to express themselves a little bit more. And Andy Cole was a beneficiary of that. So it's just interested in, 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 in him saying that. Because um, there's something in the back of my mind that's saying that when Eric and Cole played together, it just... Eric maybe didn't like him or something. I, I don't know, maybe he didn't like playing with him. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, that, that's just thought. Just thought I'd share that with you guys, but let's continue. Did you find it harder to play with Eric than Peter? It, it, yeah, yeah, I, I did, yeah. I, I think, like, like I said, sometimes Eric would drop real deep, sometimes he'd get off you yeah. guys. I mean, and ultimately, that's when you're up front by yourself. And if you get it in the wide there, it's full back and they knock it forward or whatever, you're playing against, you're fighting against three, basically, mm. full back, yeah. two centre offs or whatever, then what can you do if the board's not ideal or you're sparky? Mm-hmm. It's true, yeah, yeah, you know, so then, then like I said, you won against three. And it, it was a little bit, bit tough at times. But once I got used to it, and understood it. I, mean, I just got my head down and got on with it. Did Roy give you many assists? Or was he self? He got one or two. Yeah, yeah. maybe a few lucky ones. Yeah. yeah. Even that party gave me around about holding up and linking up, Cole. Again, you were just mature, and you obviously mm-hmm. that was. And maybe people look back at certain goal scores, and you were way better than that. That people would probably give you credit for. Mm. But that's life, isn't it? People sometimes yeah. perception of a player, but your link up player certainly improved over a few years at yes. United. But right, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think I've ever. Seen, I mean, when he came, he was quite clearly in my mind going to be the goal scorer, right. the, the prominent goal yeah. scorer. Mm. But then when you think of where he evolved to, that actually yeah. he was actually a part of a partnership that was as subservient as you were prominent. You were, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were equal, weren't you? Yeah. In terms of that, you never when you played with, even with actually with Oli or with Teddy. You played in a partnership whereby you actually adapted your game from being sort of like the number nine to being part of a pair. Yeah, but I, I, th- I think when, when you're playing such a good team, yeah, you have to evolve because you realise the focal point, you are not the focal point. Mm-hmm. It's not about scoring yeah. goals. I mean, because your strike partner can do that as well. Yeah. So if you can play as a two and cause as much problem as possible, that's what you're out there to do. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, I, at United, I never judged the strikers off how many goals they scored. Obviously, they scored important goals, great, but I always thought someone would score mm. in the team. Mm. It was actually whether I could see them all the time when yeah. I was on the ball. Mm. And you'd be the, that was I'm key sure. for me as well, yeah. That was the key. Brilliant, brilliant. I, honestly, if you weren't showing, either in that channel or on the diag, or you weren't sort of... Honestly, I'd be like, I'm sorry. that. And to be fair, that's where I think it got to, where whoever played up front in yeah. that period when you were there, you could see them. You'd have to have that option. Somebody there, and you'd have maybe a few runners, but somebody, I, when I got it, wherever I received it, I needed to see that striker's eyes. Yeah. Would it be Coley, Yorkie, Teddy, Canton? You turn it around the corner. But, but, yeah. you know, but, lads, but lads coming in there, but really wanting it. Yeah. Yeah, Some yeah. players come in there and I go, I'm free, but you know, no, I, I want to see, I'm going to whip that in. You, yeah, better, yeah. you better look <laughs> after it. 
you'd have runners off you. I, I, go on, you go. No, I was going to say, in respect of like, so you, so there's yourself, um, there's yourself, Teddy, Ole, and and Dwight. But like, there was no step. Obviously, people, you and Teddy, they talk about you and Teddy and how you got on. But there was no time that I watched that four, and you could feel anything other than danger. Whoever's playing, oh, you don't. Whichever two, it. dead right, yeah, absolutely. Whichever two, that, 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 you know what I mean? It was and. Such the, different types of players. Well, right? It was really, it was scary. Yeah. So whichever one of the, whichever two was going to play, it's going to be a massive problem. Like I can imagine if you look now and you think, of course, man. Yeah. You look at them four. Mm. You just mentioned them. Yeah. And then you look now to Manchester United, for instance, one striker. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, so, when, and that was the difference was, back in the yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about and the competition we, to. To play, to keep yeah, playing. Yeah. That's what it is. But if you look back in the day, just say United, when we played, the team was maybe having an off day and we're up against it and just say York and Coley were starting or the other way around and the manager's looking over his shoulder and he's got Teddy and Ali or Coley and York. Imagine going, lads, get warmed up. Mm. What's going on? These two are coming yeah. on. Yeah. Then you wonder why you get over the line in the, with the big prizes. You go, that's, they're not bad options off the bench. Mm. But for strikers, though, the point I'm making for strikers, there is a, there's a natural selfishness. That you do. I hope we know that, <laughs> that you do when you're playing in no. When you're playing in that environment, it's something you have to temper down you, because it's you know that everybody's going to do their job. Some people can't get to that level and think, yeah. no, I want more. I, I, I want more. I want to be the. You never. You never. That's the personalities impression. of Ali and Teddy yeah. were good, particularly that season. Yeah. Ali, particularly over his career, and Teddy. But Teddy had a difficult start to his United career. So Teddy, I don't think would have been kicking and screaming mm. when he was in the starting eleven at that particular time. Obviously, Joaquin Coley were the star men, but there was times you were taking on a little bit of the squad rotation. So that's where you go back, that's where you have to praise Ali and Teddy, the other yeah. kind of fringe players, to be ready, righty. You know, that's these lads the come on. You see that's lads coming on now, you can see it's a bit of a chore coming on. Yeah. yeah. These lads were chomping at the bit, so, ready. That's why they're yeah. top pros and you couldn't knock them. Yeah, Andy Cole, he, what a player he was looking back. I mean, I remember, um, um, you know, you're back in the treble winning in season and, you know, thinking about those, those those four strikers that they've just mentioned there, Sheringham, Solskjaer, York and Cole, you kind of took them for granted as a United fan because we always had amazing strikers just lying about, it seems. But what we wouldn't give for any one of those strikers in the United team today... Um, yeah, I, Andy Cole, I remember when he first signed, he was just a pure goal scorer and, and yeah, he obviously evolved... Um, over the years at Manchester United to become a lot more of a team player and I think that's the difference between top top sides which United were back then and you know the rest of the, the the teams in the Premier League we were when we were at our best we were not a one man show the only time we were a one man show was when Eric was there but even then everyone else it was just a finely tuned machine and um, those teams and um, Ferguson created um, but yeah, it, it, you know, clearly it, the '99 team's his greatest ever side. Well it's, well, it's not his greatest ever side actually. I think the '08 side was the greatest ever side. But the '99 team is, is certainly the most famous side, and it was very much that. It was a team. Uh, there were some standout performances, um, and some players were more famous than others. Clearly, but everyone played a vital role in the running of that. Finally. Tune, streamlined goal scoring machine and Andy Cole was a massive part of that he was just a phenomenal finisher and he scored some big goals against some big teams he scored in Chimene in the Champions League um, he got the winning goal that seals the title as well against Spurs on the final day um, and also the thing with Andy Cole was he always scored a lot of goals against the smaller sides and the mark of a great league winning side is being able to pick up the points along the way because you don't win the league um, in the big matches you can beat you can beat all of the big teams and still not win the league but you can w beat all of the smaller teams and still win the league the league is won um, away at Bolton the league is won away at West Ham the league is won at home to Charlton it's very rare you win the league at Anfield or at Highbury or um, at, at Stamford Bridge or anywhere like that. And Andy Cole always seemed to get um, the, you know, the goals against the smaller sides as well. That's what I remember. More often than not, Dwight York scored most of the big goals. Andy Cole did um, 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 you know, scored all, all the goals against the smaller sides. And I'm not necessarily saying that 
Dwight York was a better player than Andy Cole necessarily. I'm just saying that's what I seem to remember happening with those two when they worked together. Um, and, and one's just as important as the other. Um, but anyway, yeah, Andy Cole, great player. Um, still, what, top five highest scoring Premier League player of all time? Uh, he'd be worth 150 million in today's market, guaranteed. Um, but what do you guys think of Andy Cole? Uh, what did you think of his style of play? Um, yeah, let us know in the comments. But thanks for watching.